Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slasher Hour. I'm your host Lurch. And I'm Darkman. Sit back and crack yourself a cold one and enjoy. Today we are joined by the awesome Jesse Zito. Jesse, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're, we're doing awesome, awesome, man. We're doing really good. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, uh, Jesse, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, most people know me as Dickie Jr. <laughs> most people know me as a very enthusiastic March Monster Madness host. <laughs> and um, I'm just a dude that's very obsessed with horror movies and all mediums, books, movies, comics, games, music. And I've just been a devoted member of HPUSA and trying to get the word of underappreciated movies and bands out there. Fuck yeah. Um, so what got you into horror? Um, one of the big key factors for, for myself was I found out I am the second or third cousin of the director of Friday the 13th Part 4. Really? Oh. Yeah, my last name's Zito. The director's name was Joseph Zito. That's so, awesome. I, that's why I wear the Friday 13th hat. So that's badass. I'm not 100% on the relation, but that's what I was told. But what really started it was I was just always like monsters and darker stuff when I was a kid. But I remember, I don't know if you would call it a horror film, but the first movie I remember seeing at five years old was Predator. Ah, oh, my favorite. I, but some people don't call it a horror film. Well, some people are wrong. It's an action horror. I, I consider okay. it sci-fi horror. It's my favorite horror movie of all time. But I remember my dad was watching Predator, and it, I came in the scene like right when Schwarzenegger put the mud on him. And I remember just sitting there watching it, and the moment the Predator took the mask off, I ran out the room. Right. That's such and a then, great movie. Oh, yeah, dude. It's iconic. And then I remember the following year when I was six, I say this is my first horror film because Predator is kind of a gray area. With Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, because the kid's name was Jesse, and that traumatized me at six years old. And then ever since then, I've just been watching all horror movies I can find, just trying to find ones to top the previous one I saw. Right, that's awesome. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my favorites. Uh, the second one is is. A, a classic movie and like I said Predator is my absolute 100% favorite horror movie of all time um, uh, yeah no you can't um, well since you said uh, a Friday the 13th part 4 have you ever met yeah. Kane Holder no I have not met Kane Holder I Kane go Hodder. to a lot of um, horror movie conventions I, the only reason I haven't met him is just because he's there a lot mm -hmm. and usually I only have a certain amount of funds people right so i'm like he's there all the time but i have met ted white who was the jason in part four okay well, that's cool yeah. and i met cj graham who was jason in part six those are the only jasons i've met so far cool that's that's awesome um so uh let's see here what what got you into punk rock punk rock specifically i think it was just the ramones because I remember back being a kid, I would hear Ramones songs in commercials all the time. And my dad was watching Rock and Roll High School, and then I recognized all the songs from the commercials. So I guess that was kind of where it started. And then in middle school, bands like uh, AFI and Aiden were huge, and that was a big cult selling point for me, because those were the bands I was like hooked on. And like when I found the Misfits, I was obsessed with them. And I met one kid in high school, who was obsessed with Black Flag. And me and him ended up just trading bands back and forth. He'd be like, yo, dude, I found this band called Dropkick Murphy. Check them out. I'd be like, yo, dude, I found this band called Social Distortion. Check them out. Like, we were like 14, 15 at the time. Right. Dropkick is and fucking like, amazing. That's how it started with this. Because, I don't know, metal didn't really do much for me. But punk rock just like kind of clicked because I like the more raw energy of it. Right. And I just like catchy sing-along songs more, personally. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Um, so, are you you are a fan of horror? Are you a fan of the ghost uh, of the Scream films at all? I have all five of them. All right. Uh, so, uh, what has been your favorite ghost face kill? And um, what do you think uh, the next film will be titled? 
Yeah, see, this is where people might hate me. My favorite one of all of them, out of all five, was the fourth one. Okay. So, I know I really like the gutting scene in the fourth one where um where they're getting attacked and it's like I'm in the closet. No, you're not. I wasn't. I wasn't said I was in your closet. That is such a gut. That scene was like awesome. I love that scene. And um, the next one. I hope it would be in the sense of like the new Halloween movies where it's the end all to end all. Because I did read that Nev Campbell said she'll only come back if they kill her off. Really? I see. I read something different that she wouldn't come back if they killed her off at all. And actually, they signed on to do a, to do a trilogy. So it would be now this that, one. No, I just knew, I only read about her coming back if she dies off. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I read it wrong. Yeah. Um. So from what I understand is that they're going to do this movie and then do another movie um i say ghostface or return to woodsboro and maybe Stu mocker comes back that would be interesting I, I, I keep wondering where he's gonna show up i'm like he's gotta show up somewhere right so i was watching a live stream last night and they were saying something like what if there's three ghost face killers and they have to switch it up and they kill one of the ghost face off instead of killing ghost face kills a main character off in the first film what if they kill a ghost face killer you find out who one of them is but the other one gets away and you don't know who it is and you leave it on a giant cliffhanger and at the very end at the very end it's Stu mocker and it's sydney prescott in a bloody knife battle to the very death oh i would be 100 percent for that anything to get matthew Lillard back in there oh yeah definitely that would be amazing i'm 100 down for that so what is your ultimate absolute most favorite horror movie ever now see that's a hard one because i have like a select few movies which i consider horror perfection but my personal favorite film of all time is cemetery man i love that movie to death what movie is that cemetery man cemetery man i've never heard of it it came out in the early 90s and it's it's kind of like Find Evil Dead, Beetlejuice, and the Frighteners together. Okay. And it's a movie about this guy who works in a cemetery. And every during the day, he buries the dead. And then at night, he has to keep them in the ground because they come back to life. It's never explained how. And it does, you don't know if it's around the world or just this one cemetery. And to him, this is just his job. Right. Like, he's doing it like a day job, but then... He gets thirsty for this one girl he sees at a funeral where her husband dies, and she accidentally gets killed. But then he keeps seeing her pop up everywhere, and it's a weird movie because it's like it's horror, action, comedy, drama, like psychological. You can't really put it in one category, but I love it because it's such a weird movie, and I have never seen another movie like that. But if I had to compare it, it's very like Evil Dead, Beetlejuice kind of movie. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. That sounds awesome. That sounds really watch awesome. I on YouTube for free because trying to get a DVD copy that will play in America, good luck. Right? Right? Um, so, 90s or early 2000s for horror movies? Out of those, I would probably say 90s more because there's more I love in the early 2000s period wasn't a big fan of some of them, but some of them have grown on me later on. Uh, what would you say that would be your favorite uh, 90s horror movie? I mean, like I did mention Cemetery Man. Right. But some, of my top, some of my top favorites like from the 90s. Idle Hands, of course. Um, was, um, was the first Candyman in the 90s? Or was that 80s? Yeah, it yeah. was. Yep. Yeah, it was. Can Candyman probably is the, my number one 90s movie just because I'm obsessed with Clive Barker. Oh, yeah. And uh, for more obscure one, uh, Strangeland. With oh, from good Man. choice. Good choice. I love that movie. I do too. That's a great movie. Um, Let's see here. So if you could have one, if you could have dinner with any celebrity, living or dead, who would you choose? Uh, 
I, I would probably be geeking out and I would probably say Matt Mickelson from the Hannibal series. And, because uh, I know we would just be getting too into the food, then get into the horror, <laughs> and get drunk off vodka. Because I've seen that guy in interviews where he's just cracking open a bottle of vodka and down him on things during an interview. I'm like, we would just have so much fun and get lost in conversation. Here we are six hours later still sitting at the table. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, that would, that would be very cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, so, you did um, the Monster Madness. So, in wow. your personal opinion, who would win in a fist fight, King Kong or Godzilla? Uh, like I said, I want to say King Kong, but I say it would have to actually go to Godzilla just because of the atomic breath alone. Even in the original 60s version, Kong gets struck by lightning and gets superpowers. Right. Right, I love those movies. And just a mono mono fight, it would have to go to Godzilla just for the atomic breath alone. Right. Um, What is your favorite horror film from the year you were born? Funny enough, (laughs) Cemetery Man came out in 94. Oh, Oh, man. (laughs) But um, I also would have to throw one out to interview with the vampire Mm. as well. Great movie. Great book, too. I think of off the top of my head that came out in 94. Off, just off the top of my head. Right. You were born in 94? Yep. Fuck, I'm old. Fuck, I'm old. I'm ancient, then. Yeah, I, you are. <laughs> okay, so I ask this to everybody that's on the show. But you're stuck on a desert island. You can only take one band with you and one of their albums. Who are you taking? Uh, the Desert Island Band question from Green Room. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah, exactly. No pressure. I would have to say Oingo Boingo, the Farewell Tour album. <laughs> Good choice, man. Good choice. I love that band. I love that band, and the live album, like, you pretty much get almost every album on one CD. It's like three hours long, and the songs just sound way better on that album than any other album, and it's Oingo Boingo. They have, like, so many different styles, so... Yeah. They're such I a fun band, band to listen to. Insanity. I could go crazy and listen to Only Alas. I right. could go all over the place to that album. Mm. Like I said, they're a fun band to listen to. I, I, I've i always enjoyed Oingo Boingo. You got anything again? Oh, I love Oingo. I just hope they reunite. One right. I, I know Elfman's doing rock music again, and I know the rest of the band is touring with like a guest singer. Make it happen. Right? Right? I totally, I totally agree with you. Actually, the Misfits are going on tour again, and there was, I saw something that um, <clears throat> Danzig was going back and singing with them. Yeah, he does that every year. <clears throat> yeah, I want to see them actually do a tour, but lately all I see them do is just like one or two shows. Yeah. They come <clears throat> to Riot Fest here in um, in Chicago, and that's always, I guess, a really, really good time. Um I have never seen the Misfits live. That's one of the bands that I would love to see live. I I saw them live with um, when they were on the Devil's Brain tour, mm. and um, I've seen Doyle. I've seen Michael Graves. And those are the only ones I saw. And then the night I saw the Misfits, I had the choice: do I go see Danzig or the Misfits? And at the time, I was a teenager and broke. 25 for Misfits, 75 for Danzig. Yeah, they were in Texas on the same night. Oh, really? Like, one was in Austin, one was in Houston. And I'm like, I don't have $75. <laughs> I have 20 bucks, so I'm going to go see the Misfits. Right. Um, that's a good choice. Have you ever seen AFI live? AFI? No, I have not. Oh, really? They're amazing live. I saw them when I was a teenager. It's one of the first bands I was ever into. And I saw them go out and Davey Havoc came out and took a piece of plywood and threw it into the crowd and then stood on it and 60,000 people like he crowd surfed on, on this piece of plywood it was fucking amazing it was super awesome yeah. I, I wish I could have saw AFI live back today because I came into them when they were during Sing the Sorrow when they were starting to get really big uh-huh. and 
Like, I was hooked on AFI, and matter of fact, AFI was the one who got me to the Misfits, thus introducing me to horror punk. Right. Yeah, uh, so what... I lot of AFI. Uh, do you have a favorite horror punk band? Like I said, I always say the Misfits, but... And Blood Sucking Zombies from Outer Space. Ugh, good but, choice. But one of my, like, top bands that I actually don't hear many people talk about is one called Horror Section. Okay. They kind of do like a Ramones y style band. It's like if Ramones or Screech and Weasel was a horror punk band. Okay. And I, I just, their songs like get freaking stuck in my head and I listen to them over and over and over. So they're one of my top bands and I don't hear many people talk about them. Yeah, um, I've actually, I don't think I've ever heard of them. I'm going to have to check them out now. It's a very Ramones y, like, style pop punk with horror themed lyrics all about like old school 80s horror films it's so much fun well that's awesome though um i just picked up a copy of the barn and um that band rebel flesh was on there did you know that yes yeah i have the movie i know mike and i know his brother chris that's super awesome well because i met them because they came to the town where i was living and they were playing a show they were part of like one of the local festival level shows we were doing where there was like a bunch of bands on it Mm-hmm. And I went up to Chris, their bass player, because he was wearing a Nightbreed hoodie. Oh, awesome. And, and I was like, dude, where did you get that Nightbreed hoodie? He's like, you know Nightbreed. We just kind of started talking. His brother Mike came in. We kind of started talking. We all became like friends. I sang a song with them. Because really? Because the microphone broke. Um, no, uh, the microphone, like the stand broke. So you couldn't like tighten it. So I'm just standing there holding it, leaning against the wall. wall. And um, they were doing a cover of the UK set, Stranglehold. And, like, I leaned into it, and the guy's like, no, no, come on, come on. I'm like, okay, cool. So I got up there with them, and instead of holding the mic, I'm singing in the cover, Stranglehold, with them. That's awesome. And then after that, me and Mike became friends. It was kind of like how I was in high school. Me and Mike would send four punk bands back and forth to each other. So that's how I got more affiliated with it. And I think he was actually the one that introduced me to Horror Punk USA. I think he did. So the only reason I'm here is probably because of Mike from Rebel Flesh. Yeah, that's awesome. And everyone needs to give Rebel Flesh some love. Yeah, I actually, after I finished the movie, I actually, I, I didn't know they were on there. So I got on the movie, and as soon as it was over, I, I messaged him, I'm like, dude, I didn't know you were on this movie. This is this is so awesome. I love this movie. And he was like, yeah, man, dude, totally. And then they're going to be on Barn 2, which is yeah, super I'm awesome. i for that one. Uh, yeah, Barn was a lot of fun, and then I remember watching the movie, and then when they're driving in the van, and I hear the Rebel Flesh, I'm like, there he is. Yeah, that's so awesome. Um, I'm gonna let this guy borrow it because he hasn't seen it yet. But it's no, it's yet. it's amazing. And I can't I believe that movie like came out in 2016. Flashers, it. It's 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 truly awesome. I cannot believe that movie came out in 2016 because I was for sure that this was an 80 80s movie because from the from the way it's shot, the way it's acted, the cinematography, it looks like a genuine B rated 80s movie. And everything. Yeah, it's amazing. It is amazing. Um, and and, I actually got my copy. Up in Wisconsin. Oh, did you? Awesome. <laughs> That's when I awesome. Went up to Wisconsin, I went to, um, what was it? I think it was, I think it was Family Video. Oh, yep. Still around. Yep. And no. I was just, like wandering around, and I saw in the buy section, I found a copy of The Barn, and I said, I have to get it because my, because Rebel Flesh is in there. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. That is fucking awesome. Uh, so, uh, where can people find you? I'm just on Facebook at Jesse Zito. That's only where I have. I have no Instagram or Twitter. I need to get an Instagram. Everyone keeps complaining to me to do that. Yeah, you don't have Instagram. I was going to tag you for this on Instagram, and I was like, oh, yeah, I don't think he has one. No, I said I'm, Facebook is the only thing I have any social media presence on. But I, me and a buddy of mine were talking about possibly doing like a YouTube or podcast show. Do it. No, Why not? confirmation yet, but it's something we were talking about. Yeah, I say do it, man. Jump jump in both feet, man. I'd love to check that out. Look at us. We just talk about horror all the time. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what he wants to do. He wants to do, like, where we kind of make fun and rip on, like, a B-movie or something, make jokes at it. It's kind of like what Mystery Science Theater 3000 did. He kind of wants to do something like that. Right. I miss that so show. We, uh, yeah, I do, too. That's, that was <laughs> yeah. a great show. Uh, so, what's next for you, man? What's next right now? Um... Like I said, right now, I'm just rooting on for Slasher Fest. I'm bummed I can't be there, but I want everyone to have fun. 
um, grow the horror movie collection, try and get a horror punk band going. Yes. And um, one of my friends is making a movie, and I may or may not help him on it. But he awesome. did say his next movie, he wants to do a horror film. So he may call me for that. Dude, that's amazing. That's super awesome. awesome. Super awesome. You get up to Wisconsin, we'll put you in one of our horror movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll definitely do that. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to follow Jesse, all the links for his uh, Facebook will be in the description box below. I want to thank you, Mr. Zito, for being here. Uh, don't go away. I got a few more questions to ask you, but everybody else, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your mom. Tell them I love them. And until next time, I'm Lurch. I'm Dark Man. That's Jesse. And you've been slashed. Cheers. 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 We'll see you next time.